as we connect with the Word of God. See you Sunday, and to God be the glory.
Good morning, beloved. Welcome to the virtual worship services of the Abyssinian Baptist Church in the city of New York, where we've been preaching the gospel and serving our community, city, state, and nation for 213 years. God bless you, and thank you for joining us this morning. And now let us continue with our worship together by praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he taught them to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us worship the Lord together. Good morning, Abyssinian. Let's sing this hymn of the church. He's worthy to be praised. Sing along with me. Praise him. Praise him.
Amen. God is worthy to be praised. Good morning, Abyssinian family and friends. Thank you again for joining us this morning. Uh, it is time for our morning announcements. As we advance into 2021 and consider the continuing worldwide crisis going on around us, the significant increase in the COVID-19 cases here in the United States, the inauguration of a new president and first female uh, of color vice president, we gather at the cross to focus on the power of God that sustains us and keeps us. And as we posture our spirits for prayer, we lift up the names of those who are sick, shut in, and are bereaved. The names of these individuals will appear on the prayer list that you will see uh, at the end of service. Uh, it was also displayed at the beginning of service. In this moment, we'd like to lift up Sister Sandra Jameson in the transition of her father, Arthur J uh, Jameson. He was 93 years old. We list, lift up the name of Sister Elizabeth Johnson, whose niece transitioned on last week. Her niece was named Shirley Austin. We also lift up Sister Sharon King, whose brother Ray Butts has been hospitalized in intensive care battling COVID-19. We lift up the name of Mrs. Billy Suber Aaron, the wife of baseball legend Hank Aaron, who passed away this week. We also lift up the name of Deacon Jerry Warren Merrick, whose aunt transitioned. Her aunt's name was Willa Chandler. Services will be held this week in Pittsburgh. Her aunt was 101 years old. We'd also like to lift up the name of Sister Jackie Rowe Adam in the transition of her sister. And we'd also like to lift up Dr. Fumzile Mavonuka, who's the Executive Director of UN Women and the Under Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, who experienced the transition of her mother, Sabbath Nkosi Mambo. Abyssinian, there is so much to pray about and to pray for. So in this moment where we lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help, we lift up our hearts in prayer on this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we come to you on this morning, giving you thanks and praise for allowing us to see the dawn of a new day. And God, as we experience your mercies that are renewed day by day. We lift up the names of those who are sick and bereaved. God, you know that their names are many, and we ask that you would bring comfort to the individuals whose names have been lifted up on today as they deal with the void that the trans uh, transitions of the loved ones have caused. God, we ask that you would bring to them a sense of peace that surpasses all human understanding. God, we ask that you would be a divine comfort in the midst of sorrow. And also in this moment, God, where we lift up the names of those who are sick and bereaved. God, we also remember to pray for ourselves. God, we may not be physically sick, but God, there may be some emotional, mental, spiritual, uh, challenges that we may be facing. So God, on this day, we ask that you would meet us at the point of our need and be to us everything that you need us to be. And God, as we pray for ourselves, we also lift up this nation, a nation that has been fractured by white supremacy, by xenophobia, by bigotry. God, we ask that this uh, dawn of a new government, this incoming of a new administration will be a beacon of hope and healing that we need in this country. So God, inspire us, encourage us, and continue to equip us 
to do the work that you have called us to do. So in this moment of prayer, God, we ask that you would incline thine ear to hear the prayer of this, your servant. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, amen. Beloved, thank you for your faithful support of our ministries and their work for the cause of Christ here at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. And we have an acknowledgement here from the Golden Life and Health Ministries. I want to thank the Abyssinian Golden Life Ministry and our health ministry, the Greater New York Lynch Chapter, and the Lighthouse Guild for their virtual presentation on vision challenges in this continuing COVID-19 pandemic. We've received numerous reports that this informational forum was hugely successful so join me in applauding Dr. Marcella Maxwell and Sister Linda Thompson for their outstanding leadership of the Golden Life and Health Ministries. Beloved, our efforts to stem the tide of this terrible COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in our community, continues tomorrow, Monday, January 25th, when the Abyssinian Baptist Church and our health ministry partner with Choose Healthy Life and the United Way of uh, New York City to offer free COVID-19 testing to our membership and Harlem residents. Last Sunday and Monday, Abyssinian remembered the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King by offering the COVID-19 vaccine to our members and people of Harlem. We collaborated with the New York State Governor, Andrew Cuomo, and Somos Community Care to bring 500 vaccines to this community, which remains one of the hardest hit by the coronavirus. Many of you saw the media coverage and news reports of people lined up around the block, braving the cold to get the vaccine. We determined to ramp up these efforts to help stop the spread of COVID-19. The Abyssinian Baptist Church promises to keep bringing you educational webinars, awareness forums, essential support, testing, and hopefully an, an additional supply of the vaccine to the vast Abyssinian membership and community we serve. We cannot stress upon you the importance of why and how the COVID-19 vaccine testing and the church must work together. The black church is among the most trusted sacred institutions in the black community, which makes the Abyssinian Baptist Church an ideal venue to raise awareness and address health disparities. With the new president, and first African Asian American female vice president in the White House, we're looking and hoping for better, healthier days ahead. But to get there, COVID-19 testing and surveillance must accelerate rapidly. So if you're watching and you have not been tested for the COVID-19 uh, virus, come out tomorrow to get tested. And as an added bonus, City Harvest has just joined this effort to provide food packages to all who come to get tested. Tell your family, your friends, your co-workers, loved ones, and neighbors about tomorrow's testing event. We'll be there to participate in the testing along with Reverend Al Sharpton and many other ministers and key partners in this effort. Again on tomorrow, Monday, January 25th, from 10 a.m. to 4.30, Abyssinian will be open for COVID-19 testing. This time, however, you will be able to perform the nasal swab test on yourself, and City Harvest is providing food packages for anyone who gets tested. I encourage you to pay attention to the registration steps that you now see on the screen or you can access this information on our church website, www.abyssinian.org. 
Brothers and sisters, remember the scripture in Hosea 4, 6, where God tells us that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. On Tuesday, January 26, our grief and bereavement ministry will again meet via Zoom for a discussion that explores issues of experience and or anticipatory loss. See meeting details on screen. Our own deacons, Sydney Bush and uh, Henry McCurtis, uh, lead the Good Grief Ministry. Our Institute of Christian Education uh, will hold a follow-up meditation session on Saturday, February 6, uh, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The session will be moderated by Deacon Andrew Morrison. And please note meeting details on the screen, or you can visit the Abyssinian website for more details. Abyssinian's Joshua Leadership Ministry, in conjunction with several of Abyssinian's 60-plus uh, ministries, will host a virtual Sunday brunch after Sunday worship services. The first Abbey Cafe brunch takes place next Sunday, January 31st at 1 p.m. So join us for an after church conversation and fellowship for the soul. Registration is required and details will appear on the screen and are also accessible on the Abyssinian website. This will be the first ever event for the Joshua Ministry so we don't want you to miss it. The Abyssinian Baptist Church Federal Credit Union is offering scholarships to college freshmen. The Abyssinian Baptist Church Credit Union will award a $500 scholarship to a college freshman for the 2021 semester. The applicant must submit an essay describing how they've been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and the college freshmen or their parent must be an Abyssinian Credit Union member. See additional requirements and deadline information on the screen and by visiting the Abyssinian website. Sister Deb Willis and Sister Cicely Tyson uh, are both releasing anticipated books. Uh, be reminded that the release of Sister Deborah Willis book, The Black Civil War Soldier, a visual history of conflict and citizenship. Reverend Butts shared with you on last Sunday that Deb Willis is a member of the Abyssinian Baptist Church, and she is also a university professor and chair of the Department of Photography and Imaging at the Tisch School of Arts at New York University. Further, she has an affiliated appointment with the College of Arts and Sciences Department of Social and Cultural Analysis and Africana Studies. In The Black Civil War Soldier, Deb Willis explores the critical role of photography in the telling and retelling and shaping of African American narratives of the Civil War. She dives into the lives of Black Union soldiers and other African Americans involved in the struggle, from left behind family members to female spies. The book is published by uh, New York University Press and is available for purchase at nyupress.org and by using code Willis30FM, you'll receive 30% off and free domestic shipping. Also, we'd like to remind you that Just As I Am, the memoir written by our beloved member, Cicely Tyson, is available in hardcover and paperback on Amazon.com. In her own words, Sister Tyson says of her memoir, Just As I Am, is my truth. It is me plain and unvarnished, with the glitter and garland set aside. In these pages, I am indeed Sicily, a child of God, divinely guided by his hand. And here in my ninth decade, I am a woman who at long last 
has something meaningful to say. So we encourage you to go to pick up a copy of Sister Cicely Tyson's book, Just As I Am. And on Tuesday, January 26, tune in to CBS This Morning News at 8 a.m. to watch Gail King's interview with Cicely Tyson that was conducted right here at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. So again, don't forget to go to nyupress.org for Sister uh, Deb Willis's book, The Black Civil War Sur Soldier, and also go to amazon.com for Cicely Tyson's memoir, Just As I Am. And at this time, we will call our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Calvin Otis Butts, to the pulpit for more announcements and pastoral remarks. Thank you. Good morning, beloved. I'm delighted that you are with us this morning, and I'm delighted that here in the city of New York, at least here in Manhattan, the sun is shining brightly. It's a little chilly outside, but we thank God for this beautiful, calm weather. I understand the storm may be coming, so this may be the calm before the storm. Thank God for these calm moments. I am delighted to have the Celestials back with me. Uh, come on, fellas, do something right now. I don't know what you do. Just do something real quick. I know you guys are, are, are able to do that. They are socially distanced. It may not look like it on your screen, but they're far enough apart to keep each other safe. Beloved, as they play, I want you to take a look at your screen. Hopefully, you will see the Contribute Now button. You will also see that you can give by Zelle. You can mail your contribution. You can give by text to give. We need your support. I got a call the other day from a young woman who graduated from Spelman College. She's donating $5,000 worth of food supplies to our pantry. We thank God for that. Many of you have done that. And our faithful Abyssinian members and tithers have kept us afloat, have kept us moving forward. So I want to thank you all. Nothing, nothing is as important as your support of the ministry of Jesus Christ, the work of the church. So please give now if you can. And don't worry, if you're not working, you're not earning, you can't give. 10% of nothing is nothing. So don't worry about that because we don't look at what you give so much as we care about who you are in your heart as a loyal disciple of Jesus, our big brother, our Lord and Savior. So thank you, beloved. Thank you now. I want to emphasize again Cicely Tyson and Deb Willis. Cicely Tyson will be with Gail King on CBS, and we ask you to tune in early that morning, beginning at 8 a.m., Channel 2 here in New York, and go and pick up Deb Willis's book. I believe that you will enjoy it immensely. Now tomorrow I want you to come and get tested. This is huge. We need you to turn out in big numbers. If you haven't had a test or if you need another test, get tested and test often so that we can curb this terrible tide of the disease called COVID-19, this pandemic. And beloved, I hope that you will show up tomorrow. Our doors will be open beginning early in the morning. I'll be here, I'm working with Reverend Sharpton on this. We're trying to move this ahead because we want to save lives in our community. So thank you for paying attention to these announcements. And beloved, I request that you go to our website, abyssinian.org, and there you can follow up, get the specific information that you may have missed on the screen, and be ready for all of the events, the ACE course, uh, Christian Meditation, the Federal Credit Union Scholarship, the uh, Good Grief Bereavement Ministry, and especially I want you to come out tomorrow here at the church to get tested for COVID-19. And now, beloved, let me share with you our scripture for the morning. It's a brief scripture. It's taken from the gospel according to Mark beginning at the first chapter, 
in the very first verse. Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Mark 1 and 1. This is the New King James translation of the book, Bible, Biblos book. Mark 1 and 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me, who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading and hearing of the word. Beloved, I'm delighted today to thank you again for all that you have done. You can't imagine how your support of our ministry, your monetary support, your tithes, your offerings, have enabled us to help so many people in our community. We've helped people catch up on their rent. We've helped feed thousands of people. We have interceded in court cases. We have been omnipresent on behalf of our members and the ministry of the Abyssinian Church. We've received phone call after phone call of people who have needed counseling and advice. Beloved, we have helped so many people, and that's why we have to keep the ministry, one of the reasons why we need to keep the ministry of Jesus alive and well in the world. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody that they are traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. We welcome back our brother. We haven't seen him in a while, but we're delighted that he's with us today. Brother LaFrederick Costa. amen. If I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show. Oh, 
Christian art. If I can bring church say amen hallelujah then my living shall not be in vain John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sin all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Beloved, here at the Abyssinian Baptist Church, the fourth Sunday is when we celebrate the ordinance of baptism. We've not been able to do so because of the restrictions placed on all of us by the spread of the pandemic, pandemic COVID-19. However, I wanted us to focus on baptism this morning. And I begin by saying to you that this week alone, I've received three calls from people who have lost their children to suicide. I don't usually discuss these things. They come fastly and furiously. The pastor gets the call and we pray with the parents, with immediate family that may be around. But this is devastating to parents and family members, friends. All three of these young men were under 30 years old. Now, dearly beloved, COVID did not cause their deaths in a direct sense. But indirectly, I am sure that the restrictions placed on families and particularly on parents who may be a little older have caused many people to be devastated by the impact of separation, 
truncated communication and the inability just to get a hug. And so I begin there saying, beloved, that there are many of us who may not be on the verge of suicide, but certainly who are wrestling with the challenges of life, our own internal struggles, things that cause us to think horrible thoughts, simply the presidency of well, you know, has divided this nation and caused many of us even to wonder about what we're hearing on the news or reading in the paper or seeing on the television is true or not. This internal battle, these, 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 these spirits that have, have taken hold on many of us are causing us not only to move toward suicide, but also causing us distance. One from another, husband from wife, brother from sister, sister from brother. It seems sometimes that a person's enemies may be those in their own household. So therefore, beloved, I begin there. And then, how many of you saw, many of you looking from different places in the country and different places in the world may not have seen this, but there was a brutal and ugly attack on a young woman here in Harlem on Lenox Avenue. It was a black woman and her attackers were all black men. They beat her unmercifully. And one was so animalistic in his behavior toward her that he bit her around her facial area. What, dearly beloved, causes a person to stoop to this kind of animalistic behavior? Reminds me of that king in the Old Testament, Nebuchadnezzar, who had to go through a period when he was reduced to being less than human. What kind of madness in our society? And what does it say to us? That was a full manifestation of mental illness on this young woman. And what kind of mark will be left on her that will accompany her for the rest of her life? And can she break free of that haunting memory of what happened to her? on Malcolm X Boulevard. And then, beloved, as I am preaching to you now, I recorded a sermon for Rankin Chapel at Howard University that's playing at the same time. And that sermon speaks to the beloved brothers and sisters in the African-American community. It is a prophetic word that points not to the last president, that points not to the current president and vice president. It is not a word that hangs itself on political victories or the amassing of large amounts of money. It is not a word that hangs itself on popular culture that seems to have us in such a topsy-turvy way. But it is a word, beloved, that focuses its attention on what's happening to you as an individual and what's happening to us as a community of black people. Beloved, I will stay on this theme as long as I need to. And it may come to me now because of age and experience. But if there is going to be a change in our condition as an oppressed people, it will not be on the victory of a political candidate and it will not be on winning a billion dollar lottery. If it comes to us, and I believe it will, it must come as a result 
of an internal change of behavior, not only by every individual woman and man, but by an entire community. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Beloved, it's time, as John the Baptist would say, in the wilderness, repent and be baptized. Repent, which simply means in one translation, to come on home. You've got to turn from your wicked ways. You can't rationalize them any longer. And beloved, I don't speak to you as one who is higher and mightier than thou. Hi, my name is Calvin and I'm a sinner just like you. All of us have to take account of who we are and what our sins are. John came preaching in the wilderness. John said, repent. He was talking to the Jewish people who had turned from their God, who had put the Ten Commandments behind them, who was following a puppet king. Huh? His name was Herod. Uh, and the only thing that took John out the same way it did Jesus was that he was preaching to them something that would mean a change not only in their lives, but in their oppressive state under the Roman Empire and under a puppet king. And beloved, I'm saying to you, the thing that's going to make a difference in the lives of black men and women in America is when we decide that one, we're going to pull together and two, we're going to change our behavior. You can't follow. You can't follow the theology or the religion of the white man. And when I say white man, I don't say that to divide us. I simply say that because, beloved, that theology is based on his self-preservation and his cultural supremacy. Ours is based on our struggle as a people to break free from that brainwashing, those mental and spiritual chains. And beloved, when I say that, I'm not only talking about poor black folk who are oppressed, I'm talking about the poor ignorant white man who does not know because he has been kept ignorant by his own who would suppress and oppress him to the point that they would have them march on our capital and hold up the name of Jesus. What kind of foolishness is that? What kind of behavior is that? That's the behavior of a person whose spirit has been torn apart by the evil that's in this world today. And John was saying to those Jews who were caught under the same spell, Come on home, be baptized, wash away the old and bring forth the new. Baptism, baptism was a rite hmm? that meant you have experienced a change. John was a powerful preacher. John came speaking a language that the people could understand. The book says, the land of Judea and all those from Jerusalem went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sin. Beloved, we've got to confess our sin, not to me, but you've got to stand before the Creator and confess your sins. You know what they are. And they're not only the social sins. I would call that the sin of supporting a candidate like Trump. Black people who supported Trump are sin and a shame to our community. Not just the sins uh, of being involved in some of the social, and I told, I think it was that point, I've said to you right here and right now, the legalization of marijuana is going to mean death to so many in our community. Yes, beloved, we were locked up for selling it. Now it's legal. We should be released. But beloved, for those of us who used it and our children, I am willing to bet that those young men were high on something who attacked that young girl. Alcohol and, 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 and all psychotropic drugs equal death to our community. And beloved, we must continue to say so built on the gospel, the good news that the kingdom is at hand. You can have it. 
but we're tired of celebrating only those who have made it to the top by calling our women dogs and hoes. We're tired of celebrating those who have come up based on the popular culture of this society. When will we begin to realize that so many of our young people are talented and gifted as scientists and engineers? When will we begin to realize that they are artists who can praise like that young woman at the inauguration and read a poem that lifts instead of pulls down? Oh, beloved, I'm suggesting to you that baptism, and baptism has been in the Bible, not just with John, oh no, when the world was turned upside down and the book says that the minds and hearts of men and women was on evil continually, God brought forth a baptism. He washed the whole world clean. Noah had to build an ark to save the righteous and save the animals on the earth so that the earth could go on. That was baptism, beloved. That was a water washing of the world. Symbolic though it may be, it points out to us that baptism is really important if we are going to save our community and save ourselves. When Moses led the Hebrew children through the Red Sea, that was baptism. He took them through the water. Yes, it was dry ground, but on either side was a wall of water. And when the Egyptians ran into the dry ground, the water came back together again and drowned out the evil that was pursuing the Hebrew children. Symbolic soul, some of you may think. But for us, it was baptism. It was a wiping away of the evil that pursued the children of God. And here we are today, beloved. I'm talking to you, brother. You're looking dead at the computer screen. You're looking at me. You're saying, oh, come on, man. I'm saying to you that my beloved brother, and this came to me, beloved. I keep talking about it. You need to atone. You're not taking care of your children. You got two children. One is a boy and one is a girl. You send them $2 twice a year on their birthday. And the rest of your money, you're out there in the street. You may not like the mother, and the mother probably doesn't like you either. But what about the children? Atone, brother. Repent. Be baptized. Who is a dangerous black man? That knucklehead out in the street hollering Black Lives Matter, raising his fist in the air, and then go home and beat his wife? Who is a dangerous black man? That brother running up and down the street throwing Molotov cocktails, beating up women in the street. Who is a dangerous black man to the devil that roams this world? And we know who the beast is, make no mistake about it. Their bestial behavior toward the indigenous people and the enslaved people across centuries has demonstrated to us who the beast is. But how do you defeat the beast? You're not going to fight him with his weapons. No, oh, no, guns and bombs and all of that. You can't beat the beast like that. But who is dangerous to this society? It's those two young girls in our church. They're women now who have become physicians and who are practicing at hospitals here in Harlem. Who are the dangerous black men and women? It's the young brothers who are out there studying science and learning how to keep up with this technological age. Who are the young, brilliant, dangerous black men and women? It's like that sister standing at the inauguration, proud and beautiful, reading her poetry, it's like Cicely Tyson who has demonstrated her skill across the years on the stage and on the screen, yet will come to church every Sunday and give God the glory. Oh, beloved, don't you see? It's time to repent and be baptized. It's time for you to come on home. It's time for you to stop playing around. Oh, Trump is just a manifestation of a greater evil in the world. That's not going to go away. We must continue to be reminded that 74 million people voted for him. The same evil that's in him is in them. They stormed your capital. And every attempt that we tried to make at making a more perfect union, they have thumbed up their nose to. And beloved, in our own communities, we cannot have our children wandering the street. That's why I'm talking to you, brother. Yeah, you with the boy and the girl. You may walk down the street one day and see your young daughter, yours, 
walking up and down the street selling a body. You may see that young man. He might be part of that group that attacked that young girl all because you wouldn't be a father. I had an opportunity to speak with the Love and Marriage Ministry Friday night. Oh, what a beautiful group of men and women, couples, who have come together to encourage each other in marriage. I enjoy speaking with them. That's how the gospel is transmitted. That's how it's passed down from generation to generation, through families. Hmm? These beautiful people, and I want you to check the website. I want you to join. If you're a young couple, if you're an old couple, join them. And their love and marriage ministry is built on the foundation of this book. And that's what we need, beloved. That's the kind of strength in our community. So repent. Some of you never voted before. You went out and voted. Some of you down in Georgia, you saw Warnock, you went out and voted. That was the first time. That was a step toward repentance. Come on home. Some of our black colleges and universities built on the solid rock of Christ. Come on home. Don't go chasing after the high educational philosophy of a cruel and corrupt world. Many of these great universities were built on the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors. How can you embrace that racist, bigoted theology? Come on home to the historically black college and university, like Howard University that has produced your first black woman, first woman vice president, who was raised up under the powerful preaching of Mordecai Johnson. Morehouse College raised up under the powerful preaching and the walking integrity of Benjamin Elijah Mays. I'm not ashamed to call these names. I think of Booker T. Washington. You can say what you want about Booker T., but he built an institution. He gave George Washington Carver a place to work. And Carver, who could go out and communicate with trees and flowers. Beloved, don't you see what makes you great? It's the gifts God has already given to you that you plant in the fertile ground of his love and his gospel and his righteousness. And then watch yourself grow into that kind of beautiful man or woman that the world hates. Oh, you want a jitterbug, you want a bop, you want to talk, you want to be hip, you want to be in with the latest thing. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right to keep up with the times it is another thing to embrace them. And I'm suggesting to you that one of the things we need to do is come on home. I remember that old song they used to sing in the church, let us all go back to the old landmark. Let us kneel and pray in the old time way. Beloved, this is a time when we have to be baptized. Now, those of you who've been baptized already in a creek, in a pond, in a lake, in the river, those of you who were baptized in this pool behind me, I say to you, then take hold of your baptism and what it meant. I've often told you, you can go in a dry devil and come up a wet devil. So just the act of baptism itself does not necessarily certify you to be in sync. Jesus was baptized. That was a consecration of his ministry. But I want you to take hold of your baptism on this Baptism Sunday. And for those of you who are waiting to be baptized, become immersed in its meaning. You are participating. You're becoming one with God in Christ. You're becoming one with God in Christ. You repent, you come on home. You're baptized. What does that mean? It means, like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. It's symbolic of going back into the womb and then the water breaking and a new child coming forth. Don't you see what baptism is? Everybody who is in Christ is a new creature. You are participating not only in the birth of a new creature, but also in his death. They buried him. You're being buried in a watery grave and raised to the newness of life. When that water breaks coming up out of it, you're supposed to come up with a consciousness and, beloved, you say, well, Reverend, I didn't quite get that consciousness. I didn't quite understand 
Well, let me tell you one more thing, and then I'm going to sit down, and that one more thing is this. John said, I baptize you with water, but there is one coming after me who is going to baptize you with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And beloved, I'm telling you here today, come on home, participate in our worship services, and until you get here, tune in on the computer screen. Because what you need now, if you've been baptized by water and you haven't come fully home yet, what you need now is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I can't give that to you. There's only one who can give that to you, and his name is Jesus. Now, beloved, you've got to understand, if you want a real change to come into your life, you've got to seek Jesus. Seek huh, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be given unto you. Knock, knock on the door of his righteousness until he opens the door and lets you come in. I'm telling you, beloved, there's power in the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost comes from the revelation of God in Christ. And I'm suggesting to you now, looking at me, come on home. Stop this fooling around in the street. Stop this paying attention to popular culture. Stop going with the most fancy and popular new thing and root yourself in the consistent Huh? An everlasting gospel of God that comes through Jesus Christ. I'm preaching, and I'm going to sit down now because I ain't as young as I used to be, but I'm telling you this. I've seen it happen. And there's some of you who are looking at me now, you know it's the truth. I've seen a change come over. When I first met you and you came into the doors of the church stumbling and fumbling, you was cussing. You out in the street acting a complete fool. I've seen some of you. You come into the church. You got plenty of money. You had a big job down on Wall Street. Still got it. Strutting around, giving big checks, big time lawyer. But there was something rotten in your soul. You could almost smell it. But you changed. And it wasn't the water baptism that changed you. It was the Holy Spirit because you decided that you were going to stay in God's word. They were afraid of John because John not only preached them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he told them about them. So he said, you sleeping with your brother's wife. They cut that brother's head off. That's what this world will do to you. And then the one who came after him, who brings us the Holy Spirit, Jesus, he was trying to get... Touching them in their heart. And it wasn't only the Jews who came out. Everybody came to be baptized. Everybody is welcome. All. Oh, you wrestle with your sin. That's between you and God. Because I got to wrestle with mine between me and God. Sometimes it gets pretty rough up there. And that, you know, that spiritual air. That the Lord is telling me I'm trying to wiggle my way out of it. And he slaps me back down again. I'm telling you, beloved, you got to work on it. And then one day, full blown, that Holy Spirit will hit you. And you'll change. You'll change. And you'll feel the change. You'll know the change. You'll walk differently. You'll talk differently. You'll have, what did Patty LaBelle say, a new attitude. And I'm offering that to you. I wish I could get you now and take you to the water so you could feel the rush of the water over your body. But I want you to be baptized by more than just water. I want you to be baptized. That's what this nation needs. It needs a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Biden says he's a religious man. I hope so. Kamala Harris says she used to sing in the choir. It's going to take more than singing in the choir. It's going to take a real change in this nation and a real change in you. Come on home. Repent, John says, and be baptized. The doors of the church are open to you. Come on home. Come on home. We want you to be with us. We want you to be in the ark of safety. That was one baptism, that flood. We want you to be with those of us who walk through the water hmm, on dry land. We want you to come to the river to be baptized. Hmm? River Jordan is chilly and cold. It chills my body, but not my soul. Won't you come, brother? Won't you make a change in your life? Won't there be a change in this nation? The change that you want to see in the world begins with you. 
And I'm offering you our big brother, Jesus. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what height you are. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. Just come. Just come. And we welcome you to join with us. So, beloved, the doors are open. Member at Abyssinian.org. Member at Abyssinian.org. That could be your son out there in the street. You need to do more for your children. And not talk so much to your children about God. Talk to God about your children. Talk to your children about God. Let's get this thing rolling. It's going to take more than money, more than politics. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Come on, beloved. Come and be baptized. They heard John and it came to the water. Even Jesus was baptized to consecrate himself for his ministry. You are a son and daughter of God. And so, beloved, the doors are open, and we invite you to come. I'm going to call now again on our brother, LaFrederick Coaxner, to close us out. And I want you to sit where you are, brother, sister. I think I focused more on the brothers this morning, but sister, you too. You need to make a change. I don't care what you're doing out there. I miss my sister, Jean Ray. Jean was one of the biggest drug dealers in Harlem at one time. She got busted and had to go to jail. She spent, I don't know, 10, 12, 13 years in jail. She came home and then she came here and we gave her a job. Jean could testify to the goodness of God. You can change. I don't care what you do. I don't care where you come from. You don't have to give up your million dollar job. Just change internally so you know how to do the job right. And work not on behalf of somebody making millions of dollars and don't care about poor people, but work so that you can make sure that God's grace is extended to everyone. The doors are open, beloved. Change. 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 <laughs>
a change has come. Beloved, I hope that you will join us again next Sunday beginning of Black History Month. We welcome you and uh, we pray that you will, when this COVID lifts, that we'll see all of you. We've lost many of our members. Pray for those families who have gone through the terrible, terrible time of not only COVID, but suicide. Pray for them. We want change to come the way our society addresses mental illness. We need more and more. There's so much that we have to work on, but your support has helped us to carry on the ministry of our big brother, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We'll look forward to being with you again next week. Go to our website now, join our Bible study, join our prayer line, and our children also are together. You'll learn all about that if you just search our website. May God bless you now with a great week. Let us pray. And now may the power of God, the love of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all now, henceforth and forevermore, world without end. Amen.